Good morning. It is Tuesday morning, September 29th. Thank you for joining us for our devotion time today. Let's begin our time together as we go to the Lord in prayer. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. How do you react? What do you do when you're driving, looking in your rear view mirror as you're driving, and that car behind you is so close, you can almost see the expression on the driver's face? How do you react? How do you react when you've loaned someone something that you cherish, something to be used, and then you find out it was broken? And what makes it even more difficult to handle is that the person who broke it isn't that upset. How do you react? How do you react when you put a lot of work into something that is special, spend a lot of time maybe some hard-earned money, really put out the effort in doing something nice and no one seemed to notice. No words of thank you, no expressions of a job well done. How do you react? Before you answer that question, let's consider the next descriptive aspect of love by reflecting upon 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, as we consider these words, Love is not easily angered. Love is not easily angered. How easily are you angered? The picture here is of being touchy, irritable, quick-tempered. Things get under our skin and irritate us, easily angered. It's easy to become angry, isn't it? It's easy to become angry because of that part of us, that self that always looks out for ourselves and how we are being treated, what is happening to us, or what is not happening to us. And the moment we are stepped on, the moment something doesn't go in the way we would like, it's easy to become angry. Oh, we might not say something. We might remain quiet. But the anger's there. We might not act immediately on the anger. But the thoughts of resentment are still there. Love is not easily angered. We struggle with this. We struggle with love. As we've talked about each week, as we've been considering this theme, love is... We are so clearly reminded, love, true love, Christ-like love, does not come easily to any of us. We struggle. We fall. We fall into lovelessness. We are guilty of sin. And then we look to the one who is not easily angered. The one where the accusations, the lies, and the false accusations were brought out against him over and over and heaped on him. No anger, only love. The one who endured abuse that is beyond human comprehension and yet willingly endured that abuse. The one who, although he was completely innocent of any charges, innocent of any sin, took our sin, mine, yours, the sin of all, upon himself. That's love. Jesus was not easily angered because he lived a life of love for us who are so easily angered. 
And now that we see Jesus, we see love, and we are empowered in love to put anger behind us, to get rid of that irritability and short-temperedness, to strive to be more kind to one another, and put the words of the Bible into action. Let's consider a few helpful points regarding being easily angered. In Proverbs 29, verse 11, we are told, A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. In other words, a fool gives in to himself. When he's angry, he lets it out. Nothing holds him back. He demonstrates it. He speaks it. It comes out in the attitude. But that's foolish, isn't it? Because it's directly contrary to what God would have, and it's directly contrary to God's will. But a wise person holds that in. And what motivates that? Seeing the Lord. Putting our full confidence in Him. Finding power in Jesus. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, we are told these words, A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. There is so much anger. We see anger in the streets. We see anger on the news. We read about anger and angry words and angry activities. We experience anger at our jobs. We experience anger in our homes. And it's always destructive. We experience that struggle with anger right here in our own hearts. So let's join together and pray with King David, who prayed these words in Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God. We pray for that clean heart. And it is the Lord who cleanses us. He cleanses us because the guilt of our anger and the guilt of all of our sin has been taken away and replaced with his own spotlessness. He cleanses us to live in purity, to live in peace. Love is not easily angered. And for us who struggle with that, these are refreshing words because they draw us back to Jesus Christ. They draw us back to the only solution there is. Our faith right now is being tested. As Christians, our faith is really being tested every day, isn't it? But doesn't it seem that we're being tested more than ever with a pandemic, with so many challenges toward people, with arguing and debating in the world of politics? Our faith is being tested. It is a challenge not to become angry so that when we go out and live in the world, when people say something to us that we don't like, we might be more irritable than ever, quicker to anger than we normally are. But remember love. Remember love by remembering Jesus, your Savior. The Lord loves you more than you know, and he does not treat us as our sins deserve, and he is not angry toward us because Christ has taken away the cause of that deserved anger. Join me in looking to Jesus, and let's pray for the strength to put off the temptations and look to him who is our Savior and our strength, our Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love. Lord Jesus, as our Savior, you did not become angry. You were not quick to anger. Rather, you were patient, kind, and gracious in all that you did, and you did that for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for going to the cross as our Savior and cleansing us by your own blood. Most gracious Holy Spirit, we ask you to come to us through your word and strengthen us in the peace and joy so that our hearts are made pure by your saving work. Forgive us, Lord God, for the many times that we have fallen prey to anger and make us slow to anger 
so that we might always reflect your patience, your kindness, and your grace in our constant daily interaction with others and in the lives that we live that we reflect our love for you. Strengthen us and keep us in this peace. For Jesus' sake, amen. Again, we thank you for joining us for our devotion time today as we again reflect upon what love is revealed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We do have a few announcements today. Next week, or this coming Sunday, October 4th, will be our anniversary celebration service as part of the celebration of the 150th anniversary of St. John's. The focus of this worship service will be on the blessing of Christian education, and to help us celebrate, Professor Mark Paustian from Martin Luther College will be our guest preacher. He will also have a very special Bible study presentation between our services. Our services on Sunday, October 4th are at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Please join us for this opportunity to be reminded of God's unchanging grace and the peace that we have in being part of his family. On Tuesday, October 6th, we will begin a new Bible information class. Bible information class is a chance for us to lay that foundation of God's word for your faith, our faith, and our life. We're going to look at what the Bible says about the key teachings of Scripture, who God is, how we got here, how the world came into existence, what happened to bring sin into the world, God's answer to sin in the Savior. We're going to look at the work of our Savior, the work of God, the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at what the Bible is, what baptism is, what the Lord's Supper is, the Ten Commandments, please join us. It's a great opportunity because the Lord gives us his word for a reason, so that we might know him and have the eternal life that he won for us. Bible information class, Tuesday evening, October 6th at 7 p.m. And on Wednesday evening, we will be starting a new Bible study, which will be on the Wednesdays of October a Bible study on civil government, the blessing of our government, and what our responsibility is as Christians in living under our government. The title of this Bible study is Politics is Driving Me Crazy. Wednesdays starting October 7th at 7 p.m. Again, may the Lord bless you and keep you in his care. Please join us for worship and Bible study. Every week we have services on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 8 and 10.30. May the Lord bless you. Let's close our devotion time with the Lord's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.